Hey fam, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, I appreciate the fact that you've come over here. And if you have not seen some of my previous videos, please um, check them out. Um, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. I really would appreciate it. So as you can tell from the title, I want to talk to you about the, the verse um, about not touching God's anointed. That particular verse comes from the book of First Chronicles, and it is in chapter 16. And I want to read from verses 20 through 25. And it, speak, and it reads, when they went from the nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no man to do them wrong. Yes, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth, show forth from day to day his salvation, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all people people for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised he also is to be rever reverently feared above all so-called gods and so that is um and I'm going to reference an another book um right after that but I wanted to kind of open up with that and where the Lord is is speaking about as those anointed ones and those prophets are moving along from nation to nation and to various people he is warning people don't touch mine um and he's even telling kings and and all not my people okay clear the way <laughs> and you know and in a, in one of my other videos and you can you know check it out where i believe it says you know pr pray for the nations um, in that dream, um, I was standing on the earth with the Lord and the Lord had his arm around my shoulder in the end of the dream. This is the second dream that I had with the Lord in, and he comes to as a shadow um, and no, nobody's going to actually see his face. His glory is too much for the eyes and the heart to even consume. Um, even when Moses was in the presence of the Lord. You know, when he came down, he was glowing like and the people were like, what in the world? They like it scared them. So he had to put a veil over him. So, you know, in my dreams, you know, I have seen the Lord in both times in shadow form. And so as we're standing on top of the earth, um, I, I know that this is him and I am seeing the nations and the people the sorrow, the sadness, the grieving of loss um, and, and despair. And it, it pained me deeply in that dream. And I remember saying to the Lord, you know, somebody has to help the people. Somebody has to do something. They are hurting, they're suffering. And he said to me, and he looked down at me and said, and that's why I have you, you know, and he said that, you know, for me to pray for the nations and to speak and to teach his people. And I remember looking up at him and I was like, <laughs> in the dream, I thought to myself, me? <laughs> I said, somebody need to help him. But, um, you know, as I think about my life and as I talked to you about the previous video, um, I was in the natural a mistake to my parents. I, well, I will say um, an accident <laughs> to my parents. Um, I was not a planned pregnancy. I was not um, a child that they expected, um, but God expected me. And so God made sure that I was here and I was needed for a time as this. And um, and if you listen to my previous video, you can tell that the series of events that happened in my life, that happened in my life, that God um, had assigned angels to look after me and to protect me and to shape and mold me into what I needed to become to be this version um, that was needed for the world at this time. 
And so, and I, and you know, God already knows if you're going to be obedient. Um, he, he puts a will in you. And so we're going to read a verse um, also from the book of Ezekiel that references back to um, Chronicles that um, I just read. And so Ezekiel means God is strong. And throughout this book, you're going to, if you read the book of Ezekiel, or if you already have, you will see the strength and the might of God. Like, um, God is peace. God is love. God has grace and understanding. But he is also a God of wrath if he is provoked to such. Um, there's only so much grace and there's only so much understanding. But thank God for Jesus that intercedes on our behalf because um, we are a people that are just, just, just dumb. <laughs> and so let me read to you the um, um, chapter nine from Ezekiel. And I'm going to start at verse one through two, then skip over and read to you verse five through seven. And so in Ezekiel nine, it says, the spirit cried in my ears. And this is um, Ezekiel. He is a prophet of the Lord, um, highly favored of the Lord. And he, um, you know, was just um, speaking here about a vision that he had. And um, he says, the spirit cried in my, in my ears in the vision with a loud voice saying, cause these to draw near who have charge over the city as executioners, every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Okay, y'all come in closer. Uh, verse two, and behold, six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north. Every man with his battle axe in his hand, and one man among them was clothed in linen with a writer's ink bottle at its side, and they went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Okay? They standing there, they ready. Okay? They, they, they waiting on the Lord to give them their, their orders. They listening. Okay? Follow along. Stay with me. Verse 5. And to the others, he said, in my hearing, so this is Ezekiel, you know, he's having a vision and he's hearing this. Follow the man with the ink bottle through the city and smite and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have any pity. Woo. Verse six, slay outright the elderly, the young man, the virgin, the infant, the women. But do not touch or go near anyone on whom is the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the old men who were in front of the temple, who did not have the Lord's mark on their foreheads. And he said to the executioners, defile the temple and fill its courts with the slain. Go forth. And they went forth and slew the city. Ooh. <laughs> um. That's a lot. And so here, what's happening, God has gotten fed up. He tired, you know, as they say, you know, God was sick and tired of being tired of the foolishness that the people were doing. Um, he, They ran out of grace with him. And so, you know, and it says here, you know, in verse two, where he's saying that the six men came from the direction of the upper gate. Um, and then it's, and one of the six among them was clothed in linen. He had an ink bottle. So the man that had on the linen um, with the ink bottle marked God's chosen ones, God's anointed, his prophets. He said, don't touch them. But all the rest of them, the young, the old, the virgins, and the babies, clean them out. Jesus, help us, Lord. Um, and so before I go to the next verse, um, 
I, I really wanted to bring this to light because it, it, in reading this, it makes me think of the United States. Now, there's a lot of sin going on in all of these nations. But I'm going to tell you that the United States is the big dog of the sinful countries, right? Um, I mentioned in my previous video that I see visions and I see and I have dreams um, as well as numbers. I mentioned also in my previous video that one of the numbers that I have started seeing regularly um, in the last few months, a couple months, is 911. And, you know, and a portion of that is, of course, Psalms 91 um, and 1. I pretty much um, take the whole chapter, 91. And it basically is saying, you know, that God is going to be, you know, per protecting you. And he has angels um, that will keep you. But if you read that whole chapter of Psalms 91, um, it also lets you know that there's going to be a reason <laughs> why you're going to have angels that will keep you. And 911, as you know, is here in the U.S., is the number you dial for um, the police, the fire department, paramedics in trouble, right? 911 or 911 was also when the Twin Towers were um, brought down in New York um, years ago. So there's a lot of significance in 9-11. And um, um, I believe that there is a judgment coming to the nations, but probably heavier on the U.S. And there is a great need for those of us that are prophets, for those of us that are anointed, for those of us that are children of the Lord, we have to come together and pray. We have to come together and pray. And I cannot say that enough. It is imperative that folks start coming together in prayer. Pray for the nations, pray for the nations, pray for the leaders of the nations. When you're praying for your family, that's great. Cover them, yes. But the war and the and the um, wrath that God can put on this nation is going to shake us to our core. Now, those of us that are in Christ, um, it is very likely that we could be here when this happens. Uh, I do not believe that I am seeing 9-11 and some of the dreams and things that I have had um, and not see it in my lifetime. But I do believe that if believers come together, if people change their hearts, if people turn away from evil, um, that we could get an ounce of grace, right? We can get some grace. We can be covered. There are people in the um, different sectors of the U.S. that are governing certain um, sectors that are doing things in silence, in silence to us. But in the spirit realm, they're seeing it all, right? Right? And that's why there are a lot of us that are seeing 9-11. And it is a call for repentance. It is a call for prayer. It is a call for urgency. Okay? Prepare, prepare, prepare. Um, we, and and you're, you're already seeing it, right? It, it, but here's the thing. If you are not completely woke, if you are still in, um, you know, walking, you know, with the enemy right now, you are probably so distracted. You probably watching TikTok, you on Instagram, you on Facebook, you watching all of 
the uh, Netflix, the Hulus. Um, you are busy at work. You running, doing, running, doing, running, doing. You are distracted and you're not really um, paying attention to what is really happening. And that is a ploy of the enemy to keep you distracted so that when this thing happens, you are caught off guard. Wake up and pay attention. Turn off the TV, turn off these, um, um, what are these, all these um, social media um, apps and focus and pay attention. I'm not here to bring fear. God is not about fear, but he wants us to be wise. He wants us to be prepared. And for those of us that have a call on our life, we have a responsibility to tell the word, to tell the word and the world about God. Our whole purpose of being here is to bring you in, is to save your life. God is so good and he is so gracious that he is still trying, trying to wake you up. You know, there are some people that sleep very hard and there are some people that sleep lightly. I, I'm typically one of those that um, I sleep, even though I may seem like I'm sleeping hard, the slightest noise can wake me up. And so when God came to me, I was like, yes, Lord, let's go. Like wherever you wanted me to do, because <laughs> the world is the ghetto and I don't want no more parts of it. Like save me, fix me, do whatever you need to. And that is still my attitude, right? And so I just want you to understand that there is a responsibility that is placed on those of us that have a call on our life. And I am going to be completely honest with you. There has been an uptick of those of us that have been awakened, those of us that have been called, those of us that are um, going to be influential right now because there is a need. And there has been some that are in pulpits that are telling the story of the Lord in its, um, in such a way that it sounds sweet, right? And it doesn't bring you to repentance. It doesn't put a reverential fear in you. It doesn't call you to move and correct your life. Um, and reason being, I believe, is because those sermons in some churches, I am not saying all, because there are some that are doing what God has called them to do. But there are some that know that certain topics turn people off and they will lose attendance and losing attendance in the church is losing money in the church. So they, 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 they have sermons that are safe. God is waking those of us up and you see us here um, on YouTube and all throughout social media. We are coming on the battlefield and we telling the truth. We telling you the unedited, uncut version of the father. He is love. He is grace, but he is not to be mocked. And his grace is not forever. If you are doing the utmost, there are some, especially here in the U.S., I can't speak about what's being done in other countries, although I know that there have been a huge amount of disparity in the African um, nations. Whew. A lot. Um And, and I'm praying for, um, I don't know still why, um, but Kenya came up in my dream once very vividly. And Kenya has been um, in, in my deepest prayers. Um, I know they're dealing with famine and a lot of um, loss and, and death um, in that country. So I definitely have added Kenya to my prayers um, specifically, 
um, when I speak about nations and leaders of nations. But the United States, we're having a, such a huge um, overspill of the gay, lesbian, and um, the whole alphabet, and I can't remember all the LBGQs, um, et cetera. But to the point to where now they have more um, followers than Christians. They are bringing in the people faster than um, we are bringing in people for Christ. They are also going into the schools, the daycares, the kindergarten classes, and we have transgender and um, what is what is that called? Uh, men dressed in drag reading story time. The enemy is coming after the children, and I'm going to tell you why. The next group of babies and children, our next generation, there's going to be a lot of prophets coming out of the next generation. And the enemy knows it, and he is trying to stop it now. If you have a child, guard that child with your life. Protect their eyes from what they're seeing. Watch where you're leaving them for care while you're working. If you are um, pregnant, the same thing. Like, like when I say the enemy knows his time is running out and he is doing the most, him and all his trolls. And so there's an army of us that have been awakened. And when I say we coming, we coming for y'all. And y'all going to come on over here and get your lives together and stop playing because there is no middle place. There is heaven and then there is hell and there is nothing in between. And trust me, from my last video, when I told you about those dreams of those dark angels, one thing I do know is I don't want no parts of hell and, and the demons in hell. The tormenting that will be um, on you is everlasting. You guys, take it serious. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to take you to, um, ooh, hold on. He said, you start talking about the enemy and I start talking about something real <coughs> and I lose my voice. Satan is a liar. <clears throat> <Whew>. <clears throat> Ezekiel 11. <clears throat> oh goodness, I'm out of order. Ezekiel <clears throat> 11 verse 18. We going to get through this. <clears throat> and it reads, and they <clears throat> and when they return there, they shall take away from it all traces of its detestable things, and it, and all its abominations, sex impurities, and heathen religious practices. Verse nineteen. And I will give them one heart, a new heart. So God is saying, once He, you know, cleans this, you know, place up, He is going to make sure that He fixes the heart of people. He wants his people to have a heart that is that is um, conducive to the things of the Lord. I will tell you when I, um, God did his work on me, I may tell you my testimony a little bit about, you know, how God woke me up, but I will tell you when he did, I can say without a shadow of, of a doubt that I felt like I fell asleep and woke up and, and was in a deep sleep as if um, I had put been put down under anesthesia almost and woke up and felt like God had done some work on me. And, um, and then I just changed and elevated and wanted all things team Jesus, right? So in verse 19, he says, I will give them one heart, a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within them. And I will take the stony, unnaturally hardened heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh, sensitive and responsive to the touch of their God. That verse 20, that they may walk in my statues and keep my ordinances, ordinances, I'm sorry, and do them, and they shall be my people, 
and I will be their God. But as for those whose heart yearns for and goes after their detestable things and their loathsome, loathsome abominations associated with idolatry, I will, I will repay their deeds upon their own heads, says the Lord God. Um, and so in those verses there, God is going to fix the heart of those, of, of the, of the people. He wants to fix your heart. If you have a hard heart, he wants to soften it. But if you're going to be a rebellious people, if you are just going to choose to stay in your sin, choose to roll in the pigsty, <laughs> um, and you think that that life is better, um, God will give you what you want. Um, but the unfortunate thing is, you think you know what you want. Um, and so there's a, and I'm, I'm not going to take the time to find it right now, but there's a verse <clears throat> where, you know, where God is saying, and I've spoken of it before, like God knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. And because you were a spirit first, so God knew you before even your parents knew what sex you were. And because of that, God wants to bring you back to who he knows you are. Um, while you're here on earth, you're, you're kind of like asleep. You're sleepwalking. You're in the matrix, right? You don't know who you are until God invites you home. He gives you a new heart that wants the things of the Lord. And then you find out this is who I am. This is who God has created me to be. And then you move in accordance with that. And that's ultimately what God wants. But I want you guys to really read those verses that um, I went over and read, you know, some of the verses ahead, like before and after, so you can get the full context, especially in Ezekiel, where it speaks heavily about the wrath of God. And I believe that we are coming back to that time now and where it says to in Chronicles, um, where it speaks about, you know, do, you know, not touching his, um, his prophets and do his anointed ones harm. I'm sorry if I said it in the reversal, but um, it's because we have been called by God to go out and to speak about the goodness of God and to bring in the harvest. And that is you guys. If you are not saved, if you are lukewarm, if you are, you know, on both sides of the fence right now. You you love the Lord, but you over here loving the world too. And you love the Lord, but you over here wanting to go and do this too. Um, choose ye this day, which God you will serve, right? Um, so I'm going to leave you guys with that. And my prayer is that you will deeply consider um, reading Ezekiel because it really shadows a lot of what's happening here um, and why God is saying that he is sending his prophets and his anointed ones out to the nations and um, to various people um, to speak about his word, his goodness, so that we will bring in his people. All right, you guys, I'm going to stop there. And I thank you for your time. And um, I want to leave you guys with the video down below that says um, there's an invitation there. I think it's, it's labeled um, an invitation. And it's um, a video, a quick little video that I did inviting you to give your life to the Lord, to repent of your sins and to confess Jesus as Lord. Um, please consider watching that video. Please consider giving your life to the Lord. Um, you will never regret it. What he can do with your life and through your life is the most beautiful thing that you will ever know. All right. Be at peace. God bless. And I'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye-bye.